Dominic, and this is my, um, it's one of my studios where I try to think of ideas. This is in Waltham Forest. I'm, I'm originally from Sunderland, and um, well, then I moved to London, and um, this is where I try to think of ideas. So I made this um, little structure just by cutting up some wood and uh, screwing stuff together. And that, that's where I sit up there, trying to get away from it all, because London's so busy and, and, and it's difficult to concentrate. And, and so what I, tend, what I do, what I've sort of created for myself, I suppose, is just by um, coming up with ideas and then the ideas that I find surprising or um, yeah, exciting or thought-provoking, um, the best ideas I then try to turn into real things or make real, um, sometimes by making things literally or sometimes just by drawing the ideas to communicate my thoughts. And I sort of started to do this um, via the internet as I was showing my work um, so out of the gallery structure, and, um, and then it caught on and people liked it, and so I found myself being able to just think of an idea and make it real, and um, things happen. Um, this, is, this was me uh, when I was a little boy. Um, that's another uh, Amstrad, but that's the next one up. That's the CPC 6128, 128K memory, I believe. Um, and at school, I was perfectly normal. Uh, so I think I got seven C's, GCSE, two B, uh, one B and two A's. The A was in um, uh, art and the, and the other A was in physics. So actually, um, thinking back, I think designers um, have to have this combination between the, 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 the creative art side and the logical common sense side. And, and, um, and, and bringing it together. It's, it's got to be an all-rounder, basically. Um, but yeah, I was perfectly normal. Um, I, wasn't I didn't stand out as particularly creative any more than anyone else. Um, but I did like painting, just like still lives, bring in a cuddly toy and some books and paint them. And I was, I was about third best in school. Um, uh, Brendan Ferguson was better than me. Um, <laughs> but where is Brendan now? Um, <laughs> He actually, he's a successful architect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I, I liked art. Um, so I decided oh, I'm going to go on to, I'm going to try to get onto the Art and Design Foundation course at Sunderland University. And uh, I did that, and I did a bit of art and a bit of sculpture, a bit of sculpture. Um, and then the graphics section. There was this guy here called Charlie Holmes, who is the only, this is the only photograph I could find. He doesn't exist on the internet, this is amazing. But uh, this is Charlie Holmes, and Charlie Holmes is my, like, Yoda uh, person. He's my uh, inspiration. Uh, so he really um, showed me uh, a, a room in my brain um, about creativity that, that I didn't know exist, existed. And he challenged us to think of ideas and then communicate them. And I found I could, I could do it, and I found that I really enjoyed doing it, and I've been doing it ever since. So without him, I would not have found my uh, own path into the world of creativity. Um, Thanks. Oops. Okay, anyway. Um, oh, yeah, finding creative. So this is what I tend to do. I'll, t I'll take everyday things, the things that are around us, and try to... Um, give a twist to those things. So I actually find inspiration in normality rather than the um, usual inspirational things that you see, amazing art and sculptures. I don't really find that much inspiration in there. I like the challenge of taking what we know and understand and sort of take for granted and like working hard to try and find a, a, a bring it to life in a new way. Um, I actually found in my parents um, an, the very first project that Charlie Holmes set us, and it was simply to draw a line and, and give it a personality or bring it to life in some way. So these were some of the things I did. And this is, this is basically what opened up the, the doorway, this type of project that he set. So I drew some lines, like uh, a line that took a deep breath. And... Uh, a straight line on a rest day, <coughs> and 
a line that coughed. <laughs> and I started to realize, I, I, you know, I, I found that, you know, if you, can turn a, if you can turn a line into something more interesting or special or have a personality, then you can do it with anything. And um, so this is an example of really um, setting me off. So I started to think up um, ideas, and all of my ideas came about, about uh, everyday objects and everyday observations about people. And so, for example, a fence. And this is a cost-saving five-plank fence. The sensor detects the position of the person <laughs> and moves the fence accordingly. Um, this one is a snoring solution. So they, the, the snorer is woken up by, the, by their own microphone snoring noise. Um, this is uh, when the film is scary, press the emergency hands button. <laughs> Uh, this is trouser shorts blind, uh, sort of, uh, and no one's done this before. <laughs> Can you believe it? Uh, this is um, GPS, name GPS. For those who forget names in social situations, you are facing Tom, turn left to face Claire. Um, this is, wearable technology was a big thing, and then people struggled to come up with any ideas. Well, this was the pinnacle of wearable technology. Um, I then went to Edinburgh College of Art. I did graphic and visual communication, and just uh, in my spare time, I did some creative things. So I, I um, attached an on-off switch to the back of my ha 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 hair. This is when I had hair, and um, I shaved the patch, and I wore it for about a month and walked around Edinburgh, uh, causing confusion. And what is it? What is? <laughs> like, <laughs> When I go to, to order a drink in the pub, it would always go quiet behind me. Like, what is this? And people would say, how do you get to sleep, though, you know, with that on? I said, well, it's easy. You just switch it off, you know. <laughs> um, the world's first... I recently did uh, the world's first art exhibition for dogs. Um, this was dogs. Um, dogs can actually only see blues and yellows. Really, they don't really, they don't see um, reds and purples and such like that. Uh, so I commissioned some artists to do some art, a wall-based artwork, and then I made a giant dog food bowl that with had with ball pit brown ball pit balls that look like food. And um, I also did this. So I um, this is a simulator, <laughs> a simulation of uh, yeah of, the, of this dog sticking the head out of the window. And basically, uh, I took a photograph with my iPad like that in uh, the park in front of my house. And then on here, there is various um, meats and uh, fish and old socks, because that is actually the scientific reason why dogs stick their head out the window. It's all of the scents. They're getting bombarded with 100 scents. Um, so that had a little turner there. Um, looking back, so sometimes I'll get inspiration from the past, so we don't, in order to come up with ideas for the future, you don't have to keep like, looking what's the future and what's, you can look to the 5,000 years of um, creativity and making in the past. Um, so I took inspiration from The Wizard of Oz and Dorothy and um, her GPS shoes, uh, not her GPS shoes, but I, I took inspiration and I created the world's first pair of GPS shoes. So. Um, inspired by her ruby red slippers that she clicks together and goes back to Kansas. So basically, you plot on a map where you want to go in the world. You press upload to shoes. Um, the left shoe points in the direction of the destination. That moves around. And the right shoe is a little progress bar. Um, so that was it. And then I worked with a traditional shoemaker and technology person and uh, designed how they would look. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, Oh, wait a minute. Let's see if that video actually starts. I sort of see an example of it working. There. I'm going to move on. Um, so I do loads and loads of that stuff, but um, there's lots more of that stuff. But that's been most of my life. And then two years ago uh, in Sunderland, uh, I did a project there for the first time, returned to Sunderland after uh, being there at university a long time back, and I proposed this idea of asking um, 
450 primary school children to think up and draw their own invention ideas and then ask local makers, manufacturers, creative people uh, to turn the best or most or funniest or most brilliant ideas into real things for an exhibition in Sunderland. And so I did 19 workshops in um, two weeks and we got 600 invention ideas from children. They could be completely bonkers or perfectly practical. And then I asked, uh, I asked local makers, uh, craftspeople, designers who were interested in turning the ideas into real things, prototypes, and to come along and select the ones that they were interested in. And then the children met with the maker people and um, learnt about what they did and uh, talked about their idea to the maker and explained, so they were the inventor, the children were the inventor and the, and the maker was trying to uh, turn it into reality. Uh, this was some of the examples. This is uh, Wendy, um, she came up with a family scooter <laughs> and uh, they worked at an advanced motor, um, automotive uh, place there, making the family scooter which then got made into this. This, late, this uh, recently got taken into the Victorian Albert Museum's permanent collection. So um, it's gone quite well. Uh, <laughs> the, um, Kai did the super fast tennis uh, ball where you can adjust the speed of a tennis ball to play slow motion um, or, or fast or speed up your tennis. Um, and so we animated some of the um, drawings and, and then um, so you can turn the dial and change the speed or power of this tennis ball and yes it does work okay it doesn't but um, <laughs> <coughs> but it does they don't have we're not limiting on what is possible because anything is possible nowadays and who knows you know in the future there will be a slow motion tennis ball um, this was Oliver he coincidentally went to my primary school age six he said when he does a good thing and he's on his own um, but, but he has no one to do a high five with, so he wanted a high five machine. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we worked with a local fab lab in Sunderland uh, who created this uh, device that you press a button and they scanned in Oliver's hand and made a little copy of that and it, it comes forward and he, he had a five, uh, high five. But also in the Victorian Albert Museum's collection. Um, children watch the news and they take things in. This is Charlotte, and she created a war avoider. Um, so the house gets lifted up out of the war zone and is covered in this invisibility blanket. And uh, this was the maker, and it made a beautiful model. This was Erin, um, made this beautiful model. So, so even if the child's idea is huge, you can still, it's just about taking children's ideas seriously and presenting them to the same standards that we adults have. So really the project is about ideas, creativity, and imagination. That is, I think if we ask enough children, we will come up with some great ideas. And as long as we give them some information, you know, we, we as adults can learn a lot from children and their natural creative approach, their playful, open-minded, anything is possible approach is something that we can actually learn from and, and use in the, in the way we, we, we approach um, trying to come up with ideas. Anyway, so I covered a, I got an empty shop. There's quite a, there was quite a few empty shops with the internet. And you people, um, really. <laughs> um, um, so I covered it in my, uh, some of my drawings and then we, we filled this with um, the objects. So the objects were, were shown in the middle and um, the uh, drawings on the wall. Uh, then I put it on the internet and it went around the world. So we had like CNN and um, uh, Discovery Channel visiting and the children were interviewed. Um, <clears throat> it became really successful. I started to get emails from people wanting to do the same thing. Um, I got asked to speak at the United Nations. Um, <clears throat> that's the family scooter there. Um, and so now we've started Little Inventors, which is now, so this is only over the last year and a half since we started Little Inventors. That project was about two, two and a bit years ago. Um, we got a website, um, littleinventors.org, where children can upload their invention ideas and then we give positive feedback on as many as we can. 
because uh, I, I think that creativity and confidence, self-confidence, are very interlinked. Um, if you need to, be, whether you're a child or an adult, you need to create an environment and a feeling of confidence to um, <clears throat> to be creative. The more confident you are, th there is a definite line. You could draw a graph between your confidence dropping and your creative ability dropping um, <clears throat> at the same time. Um, now expanded into China, and so that's in a remote village in China where children over there are doing the same um, challenges. Uh, this was a little girl in the Sunderland one. I had a little recording device on me, and I was photographing everything to document stuff. And if you, if you can hear the Sunderland accent, which she says something like, um, now that I know that inventing is so much fun with... Uh, now, now, that, now that I know how fun it is to invent, I want to be an invent when I grow up. Oh, that's wonderful. I want to be an invent when I grow up. Hmm. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so this is Little Inventors. Um, we've got a website, on, we're on Twitter, um, Instagram, all of that. What we're really looking for uh, is, is ad a skilled people who are interested in being involved and helping us... Uh, turn some of the best ideas from children uh, into reality. So please do get in touch. We're doing the. We're part of the great exhibition of the North. So we've already asked. We've got 2,000 children's ideas at the moment for this project, and now we're looking for makers or anyone with skills that can visualise and bring to life in any way. Could be animation. Could be graphics. But, or objects or 3D design, uh, bring to, to life these children's ideas, uh, please get in touch. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, great. The art exhibition for dogs was, was amazing, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, uh, just some practical. So, uh, in terms of the 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 little, so it will be the little inventors as part of uh, great exhibition. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yes. And and so, will the, is is it a kind of process where basically people submit ideas and then do you kind of pick and curate the ones that yeah. that, that go forward, if you will, from there? Yes. So we uh, yes, as we say, we've got about we put a call out to children in the north and uh, we received about two thousand invention drawings about the year twenty thirty. So this is a specific project about the future of the North. And so we've got lots of these ideas from, the, from <laughs> bizarre to surreal uh, to perfectly practical. And now we're in the process of finding ad uh, skilled people to okay. take them seriously okay, for cool. an exhibition at the Discovery Museum in Newcastle. Okay, so that will end, that will be at the end of the, the, the great exhibition. That, that will be it. But okay, we've also cool. got the Make Fest, um, which we'll be involved with as well, probably. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking for people to be involved in that. Okay, cool. So, and will that be a similar thing as well, where people pitch ideas a and then they get... Very much the same thing. Okay, yeah. great. Cool. Dominic, great. thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.